In this probability lesson, we are going to look at how tree diagrams can assist us as a way of representing the sample space, but then help us to answer questions about each situation. So in this question here, we have some marbles in a bag, three red, two blue, and one green. And we select two marbles without replacement. We'll consider what that means in a moment. So the first part of the tree diagram represents the first marble drawn out of the bag. Because we have three red marbles, we have three red branches, then two blue branches, and then one green branch. Now because the instructions are that we take the two marbles without replacement, it means that the branches following depend on what's gone on before. If we've taken out a red marble, left in the bag are now two red marbles and still two blue and one green. So at the end of each of these red branches, we have two more red branches, two blue branches and a green branch. But if the first marble taken out is blue, we still have three red marbles in the bag, one more blue and the green. So after each of the blue branches, we've got three reds, one blue and one green. And if the first marble taken out was green, it means that in the bag we still have the three red marbles but no greens. The size of the sample space is 30. Now the probability that I take a red marble, then a blue marble, I look at how many branches go red, blue, and there are six of these out of the sample space of 30. Probability that I have two the same colour, six branches that go red, red, and two that go blue, blue, and none that go green, green, out of 30, so this is 8 out of 30. And then finally we have a conditional probability. What's the probability that we take a blue marble first, given that we're taking a blue marble second? So if I look at the condition first, given that there's a blue marble second, means I'm going to ignore all of the sections of the tree diagram that don't have a blue marble second. So now looking at my tree diagram with only the branches that have a blue marble second there are 10 of those and of those how many had a blue marble first and that's 2 out of the 10. It's easy to see how a tree diagram with all of those branches can become very complicated. And so now we're going to look at how we can simplify the tree diagram. We have three colours of marbles in the bag. And so in the original tree diagram we had three branches for red, two for blue and one for green to represent the three red marbles, the two blue marbles and the green marble. What we can do instead is just use one branch of each colour but to indicate the fact that there are different numbers of marbles in the bag, we write the probability on each branch. So to start with, we've got three out of six red marbles, two out of six blue marbles, and one out of six green marbles. Once we've selected a red marble, we now have five marbles remaining in the bag, two of which are red, two are blue, and one is green. And once we've selected a blue marble, we've got three out of five red, one out of five blue, and one out of five green. And if we select a green marble first, we then have three out of five red, two out of five blue, and zero out of five green. So if I answer the same questions again, Firstly, what's the probability of selecting a red, then a blue? We can answer this by multiplying along the branches. So probability of red, then blue, means 3 over 6 multiplied by 
2 over 5, which is 6 over 30. The second question was, what's the probability of selecting two the same colour? And if I look along the branches where I've got two the same colour, that's red, red, blue, blue, or green, green. Probability of same colour is 3 over 6 multiplied by 2 over 5, plus 2 over 6 times 1 over 5, plus 1 over 6 times 0 over 5, 8 over 30. And the third question was, what's the probability of achieving a blue first, given that I selected a blue second? I'm going to start by working out the probability of each of the combinations. So probability of red, red, 6 out of 30. Probability of red, blue, is also 6 out of 30. And probability of red, then green, 3 out of 30. And so on. Now assuming I've done this correctly, these probabilities should total 1. Now remember the question was, what's the probability that I draw a blue marble first, given that I've drawn a blue marble second? It's really important to deal with the condition first. So given that we've drawn a blue marble second, we're interested in only the branches where there's a blue marble second. So that's this, this, and this. The total probability of drawing a blue marble second is 10 out of 30. Of those, what's the probability that a blue marble was drawn first. 2 out of 30 for blue marble first, given that I've drawn a blue marble second. So I'm not interested in blue red or blue green. I'm only interested in blue marble first, given that I've drawn a blue marble second. So probability of blue first given that we drew a blue second is 2 out of 30 all over 10 out of 30 which is 2 out of 10. We're going to look at some vocabulary connected with probability, look at different scenarios where events are mutually exclusive, dependent and independent. We've already looked at conditional probability and what that means, where we have given information that affects the probability. I'd like you to just pause the video for a moment and think about this situation with the bags of marbles. If you think about the two events, drawing the first marble and then drawing the second marble, are these events mutually exclusive and are they dependent or independent? I wonder if you've thought about why we multiply along the branches of a tree diagram. We're going to use a Venn diagram to help us with this question. We've got two events, event A and event B, and this section in the middle is when A and B both occur, and the section around the outside is when neither event A nor event B occurs. We think about the probability of event B occurring given that event A has occurred. A common error here is to think that this is the probability of B over the probability of A. And it does look a bit like it's a fraction with this given that symbol. Let's think about it using the Venn diagram. So firstly, given that event A has occurred, that means that we want this probability here. Event A has occurred, we're given that. We're now going to ignore everything outside of this red circle. So the probability that event B occurs, given that event A has occurred, is just this section here. And that part is the probability of A intersect B. So the correct way to work out the probability that event B occurs, given that event A occurs, is the probability of A intersect B over the probability of A. 
Now rearranging this, the probability of A intersect B is the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B given that A has occurred. So thinking back to the tree diagram, firstly we've got event A which can occur or not occur, symbolised by A dash, followed by event B which can occur or not occur. Now the probabilities involved here, probability of A and probability of not A, fairly straightforward, but these probabilities depend on what's gone on before. So this is the probability of B given that A has occurred, the probability of not B given that A has occurred, the probability of B given that A did not occur, and the probability of not B given that A did not occur. So if I want to know the probability that A and B both occurred, I can multiply along these branches to achieve the same result. Probability of A multiplied by the probability B given A. The next question to consider is why do we add to combine the final outcomes? So remember the example with the marbles, we wanted to know the probability that both marbles are the same colour. So this was the probability of achieving two reds plus the probability of achieving two blues. We could of course include the probability that there were two greens but we know that this is zero. So we worked it out as 6 over 30 plus 2 over 30 which is 8 over 30. I'm going to use a Venn diagram again to explore this idea. So firstly thinking about the number of elements in A union B. The number of elements in A, represented by this red circle here, and the number of elements in B is represented by this blue circle here. If I want the total number of elements in A or B, if I were to just add the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B, there's a problem because I would have counted this middle section twice. And so to work out the number of elements in the union of A and B, we add the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B and we subtract the number of elements in the intersection of A and B. Now just make a note here, we're not subtracting it because it's not part of the union, we're subtracting it because in the process of adding the elements of A and B, we've counted this section twice, so we need to subtract it once. Similarly, the probability of an event being in the union of A and B is the probability of A plus the probability of B subtracts the probability that it's in the intersection. Now, if A and B are mutually exclusive, that means that the probability of an event being in the intersection of A and B is zero. If I were to draw a Venn diagram representing this situation, A and B would have no intersection. And so for mutually exclusive events, the probability of A union B occurring is the probability of A plus the probability of B, because subtracting the probability of A intersect B is just subtracting zero. Now in our example with the marbles, if we want the probability that both marbles are the same colour, event A is the probability that two reds occur, event B is the probability that two blues occur. Now clearly these events can't both occur. You can't have two reds and two blues. And so these two events are mutually exclusive. And so we can add the probabilities without having to worry about what we need to subtract. 